Hello, once again, everybody, and welcome back to the Rise Up Rooted Symposium. I am so glad that you are here with us for this five-day global conversation with authors, speakers, teachers, experts from all over the world who are here to help us understand the benefits and the methods of connecting more deeply and mindfully with the natural world. I am your host for this event, Alex Strauss, and today I am so excited to welcome back to Rise Up Rooted, Dr. Laura Conover. Dr. Conover, Conover is a holistic physician, a grounding advocate, speaker, and author of the best-selling book, The Earth Prescription, beloved around the world and translated into multiple languages and foreign editions as well. Dr. Conover has been featured in many news and media outlets, writes a regular health column for the national organic lifestyle magazine, Mary Jane's Farm, and is featured in the motion pictures, The Grounded, Heal for Free, Down to Earth, and The Earthing Movie. And welcome, Dr. Conover. Thank you so much for joining us again and talking about one of my favorite subjects as well, which is grounding. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I, uh, I don't always love public speaking. I get a little nervous, but I, when you ask me, I'm like, yes, because you're the best interviewer. And I had such oh, a awesome. Well, that makes me feel so good. Thank you yeah. so much. I'm so glad you feel comfortable and so glad that you uh, agreed to come back to Rise Up Rooted because you uh, have spoken here before. And we had several people who really enjoyed that uh, talk and resonated with it. And um, we're excited to, uh, to hear what you have to say again. And of course, um, I mean, I didn't read the official topic of the interview, which is feel instantly centered and renewed through grounding. But I just take it for granted that we're going to be talking grounding. And folks, if you don't know what we're talking about, when we say grounding, you are going to know in the next 30 minutes and you're going to be, your mind's going to be blown. So um, let's just start right there, Dr. Conover. You are a world expert on this topic of grounding. So explain to us what you mean when you say grounding. Okay. When I say grounding, it's so simple. I literally mean touch the earth outside. The earth has an electrical component. It's a natural energy. It's called DC energy. It's not the fake artificial man-made energy that we're, we think of that powers a light bulb. It's just a natural, the energy of the exchange of the entire universe and everything living on it. So plants run off DC energy. Um, it pulses out of the earth and our bodies, which most people don't know, actually run off of DC energy as well. So when I say grounding, I literally mean, think of plugging in like you would plug into a, an electrical outlet if you wanted to charge your cell phone, but if we wanna charge our bodies, we're gonna to physically touch the earth outside. And there's a lot of conductive surfaces we can go over because it's easier than you think. You don't have to be like on the beach. You don't have to be dirty in a mud pit. You can just with one fingertip touch one leaf on a tree and you're grounded. And part of that DC global electrical circuit. Okay, so help me. How, and I know this is a really complex topic and we're not going to completely tease it apart in 40 minutes. That's why I want you to go and get um, Dr. Dr. Conover's book, which is fantastic, which I have on my shelf um, and watch one of those movies. And you, if you're interested in this topic, there's you can learn a lot from a lot of other stuff. Um, but explain to me if I am DC powered, mm -hmm. how come I have not touched the earth I don't know, at least for the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. And yet I'm still running. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? I think, like, yeah. where's my power coming from then? Right. Well, we are self-contained units. So you can have a lifespan where you are so insulated, you're in a plastic bubble and you never connect with nature. Unfortunately, your organ systems are not going to be optimized. They're not going to run well. And over time, you're going to get inflammation. You're going to have chronic pain issues. You might have, start getting food sensitivities. You get dysregulated. Your circadian rhythm's off. Wow. You have no energy. You wonder why you're depressed and irritable. You wonder why you can't sleep at night and you feel off. And you're off because you're not connected to the cycle of the earth. And there's multiple ways that touching the DC energy of the planet does sync our body back up to optimal health. It makes all of our organ systems run better. And we have 50 years now of studies on this. And um, it definitely syncs us back up to day and night. And I can go into more detail how it does that if you want. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want. Um, can you give us a simple explanation? <laughs> you know, that's, that's asking a lot. <laughs> Maybe. Um, why, why it works. And then we'll talk about immediate and, and long-term benefits of, okay. of grounding. So why it works is because if you think of the earth as our charging station, it has two ways that it gives DC energy output. One is a constant heartbeat. That's the Schumann resonance. That's DC energy coming out. And so when we touch the earth instantly, 
our DC body is instantly grounded electrically to the earth and it puts our body in a healing state. And then longer term, how it works to sync us back up to day and night and get us sleeping better and have our energy back and get organ systems working better is something called the Carnegie curve. And that is a DC energy um, rhythm. That's a 24 hour rhythm. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world. So your viewers that are in Australia or your viewers that are in South America or your viewers that are in North America, wherever you are in the world, that Carnegie curve is synced up to that time zone. And it's a 24 hour rhythm. And it has a peak at 7 p.m. and a valley at 3 a.m. And so that informs our body, whether it's day or night. And on top of that, it's elliptical seasonally. It's strongest in the summer and winter and weakest in the fall and spring. And so it's this elliptical daily up and down and elliptical annual pattern that informs our body what season we're in. So when we live disconnected, which like you said, you can, I mean, I know people who live decades and they don't, they, they get fresh air, but they don't touch the earth. So they're right. never grounded. Well, they definitely deteriorate, health deteriorates over time. And also they stop getting that information from the earth electrically into our body saying what season we're in and what time of day we're in. So if you feel really off, that's your first step. Oh my gosh. So I think that a lot of us, when we think about the circadian rhythms and we think about the sun, right. And the light from the sun and how it's important to get natural light and be out in the sun and, you know, dim your lights in the evening and stuff like that. But you're saying that the earth itself also has messaging along those lines too. Stronger right? messaging. I agree with the sun. I mean, vitamin yeah. D and the visual of being outside and the fresh air and the ions and the you know, the microbiota that's out. There. I mean, so many things about being outside and sun is part of it. And I agree, blue light messes us up. So definitely light exposure does play a part, but more so, and we've known this since experiments in the seventies, more so the earth informs us day and night. So if I can just tell you really quick about an experiment to kind of illustrate this for you. So in the seventies, researchers built a bunker under the ground um, to test this. And they put test subjects in there for two months and shut them off from the sun. So they were in artificial lighting and they left them to their own devices to work, eat, sleep um, without sunlight. And they maintained roughly a 24 hour rhythm. It wasn't perfect. Some days might've been 20, some days might've been 23 or 27, okay. but roughly for, for weeks. Then they made a bunker under the ground that was shielded from the Schumann resonance that we talked about, that DC energy that the earth provides. They shielded that. So it was almost undetectable levels inside. And those, every single case where someone was desynchronized did not come from the ones where they were shielded from the sun. It was the people who were in the bunker for weeks and weeks and weeks who were shielded from the earth's energy and the sun at the same time. Um, but we know from the control room of just being shielded from the sun, it wasn't the sun that deregulated them. It was the one where they were in the bunker, not connected to the earth itself. And they became internally desynchronized. And every single person in that experiment who was internally desynchronized were the ones shielded from the earth. So we've known wow. for 50 years that the earth tells us and informs us what season it's in and what time of day or night it is and gets us into this pattern. And so I would rather survive without the sun. I'd rather live in a climate where it's just rainy all day than never ground if I had to choose. Wow. Okay. That's really powerful. And, yeah, and it's not to take away from the sun because I mean, obviously we, life exists because of the sun and you need that vitamin D. And I, you, you know, I'm not saying that that doesn't absolutely be something essential. And it's a definitely a bonus for going outside and grounding. It's win-win. So it's definitely nothing to take away because you probably have speakers that talk about the importance of sun. And there have sure. been medical studies that show that more time in the sun actually prolongs your lifespan. So it's, again, it's a whole separate pie, but most people don't understand that the earth itself is a huge part of it too. One of the things that I really love about this symposium is that we have speakers here who talk about all the different ways, right, yeah. that nature is healing to us. So we have people who are talking about the importance of communing with houseplants and yeah. people who are talking about the sun and about uh, the phyton sides that come from trees. And, and now we're talking about grounding in this DC energy from the earth, which is just absolutely fascinating. I want to... Um, I want to back up a little bit and talk a little bit about you and your history and how, how you kind of came to this, uh, to do this work because you're a physician, right? You are, you're a classically trained yeah. Western yeah, MD, MD, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, this is pretty out there compared yeah. <laughs> to, you know, I've, I'm guessing you didn't learn this stuff in medical school. No, so tell me a little yeah. bit about how, how you came to do this work and, uh, yeah, your own journey. Well, I made the 
transitioned to holistic medicine because I became a mom and all of a sudden conventional medicine was starting to like rub me wrong because <laughs> my daughter had colic and I would take her to the pediatrician. And I remember leaving with like two prescriptions that I didn't intend to fill just to get her to stop crying for, you know, and they were yeah. like, cry it out, stick her in a crib, just leave the house for a little bit. She'll fall. That's not what, no, she was literally in pain. I'm not going to just stick her in a crib and ignore her. So, um, so I kind of was like, all right, well, I'm on my own with this. And the only thing that made her feel better was when I was holding her in my arms and I was outside and I lived in Arizona at the time. So I was always barefoot. And that's what I noticed. And it just was from desperation is she would take a nap finally, if I was walking outside with her holding it in her, in my arms. And it wasn't the walking wow. because if I did it inside on a little bouncy chair, or if I, you know, I would walk loop the house downstairs or I'd put her in the car and it wasn't just the fresh air. Cause I could have her in a stroller crying, crying, crying pain all the time. She had to be connected to the earth. And that was through me, through my bare feet. And that's how conductive we are. And that's how much we rely on DC energy because the minute my foot touches the earth, not only is my whole body con conductive and grounded, but so is anything I touch. So you touch a pet, you touch a dog, you're holding a baby, you're holding a child's hand, you're holding your partner's hand, you know, a spouse, and they're not grounded. But if you touch them with one cell of your skin, then they're grounded too. So that's how I would, and I just didn't know what it was called. And um, someone one time in a mother's group said, oh, you're, you know, you, you seem so grounded, but she meant it more energetically, like right, yeah, centered. And it just something about it. And I went and I started looking in the medical research that, you know, the doctor part of me kind of was like, I don't know, it just the term resonated. And lo and behold, there was decades of medical research on it. And it is such a thing. And I didn't know. And like you said, I went through all of medical school and my internship and not per one person said one thing, never. Yeah. And it's ridiculous because I will say what we do know in medicine and what every doctor, I don't care how conventional they are, they do know your body runs on DC energy because when they get that heart, you know, they're getting an EKG looking at your heart. They know that's not man-made energy that a, a person's not in there clicking your heart to beat. Right, right, right. It's not fake. It's normal. <laughs> right. It's natural. Even if we didn't have an EKG machine, your heart is that classic heartbeat is DC energy. And when we check, you know, your brain function and we get impulses, your brain impulses with an EEG. We're looking at your DC energy of your brain, making sure it's okay. And, you know, same with everything, your muscles contracting, everything that we can monitor in the body. Physicians know is DC energy and we're using that, but no one has yet embraced that much. I mean, some people are, but not in conventional medicine as much that since our whole body runs off DC energy and we use it to diagnose, why not use it to treat or even prevent in the first place? If that's what's healthy for our body and that's what our body is running off of, why are we not using it as a healing modality beforehand? Why are we just looking for a heart attack or a stroke or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like all doctors are understanding on some level that we run on DC energy, but not all doctors are understanding that it, there's medical literature out there that shows that it prevents and optimizes things before it gets to the point where you need that EKG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you, as a holistic physician now, do you use this in your practice? Do you prescribe and use grounding for, for patients? A hundred percent. Yeah. There's not any symptom or condition that someone can come to me with. I don't think I, I've yet to meet it where I don't feel like grounding would be part of their healing plan. Wow. Wow. That's pretty powerful. It's like saying, I mean, I would suggest fresh air. Like we all have to breathe. I would <laughs> right. suggest clean water. We all have to drink. And these are all things from the earth as well that I know our body needs to sustain our health. Mm -hmm. I can't mm -hmm. go without either of those. And mm -hmm. Personally, I feel as well that there is enough medical literature now to justify saying that in order to have a long, healthy life, we also need to directly touch the earth instead of just drinking the water from it and breathing the air it creates, you know, we need to actually touch it as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I think it's interesting that there are, there are a lot of things out there that we hear about that might be helpful. Mm -hmm. It might be helpful to take a um, B complex vitamin every day. Right. It might be helpful to, you know, certain, uh, I think, particularly, yeah, right, right. You know, yeah, particularly yeah, yeah. In, in terms of supplements and stuff, mm -hmm. but with, but, but you know, you take too much vitamin A, for instance, and that's very bad. You know, you can, you can actually damage yourself taking too much of the wrong thing, or if you're taking the wrong thing and also drinking grapefruit juice, which right. is also good for you, but you're not, you know, right. But there, it doesn't seem to me, is there anything negative about grounding? That I don't could think it, how it could be, because if there was something negative about grounding, I don't think we would exist because obviously <laughs> right? no human beings before plastic shoes and right? insulated. 
So if there was, I don't think we'd be here, but I will say there's some cautions and the caution is only, and this is kind of pathetic because this is how conventional med medical physicians think. The caution is, is that it might improve your health so much that you have to decrease some of your prescription medications. So it helps boost your circulation. Your blood actually goes through your body more efficiently. So if you're on a blood thinner, you might want to disclose that to your physician and you might be able to go down on your dose. But what a conventional physician will say is, I guess, don't go outside and touch the earth because we want to keep you on this high dose of prescription. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Another, it boosts your thyroid because it optimizes your metabolism. A lot of people, when they start grounding, realize that they naturally lose weight it, because it boosts your whole basal metabolic function. So if you're on a thyroid replacement, I'm not saying not to ground. That's what maybe a conventional physician would say, well, this is your dose. So if it's helping, you know, boost your own thyroid, maybe don't do it. No, I would say do it and go back every month and recheck your thyroid labs and just see, cause you might be able to come down or off your thyroid medication. Cause that would wow. be the goal. So blood thinners and thyroid medication are the two that I would say you might improve so much that you actually can be titrated down. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, we've, um, so we've talked kind of philosophically about what this can, well, not philosophically, but we've talked in, in the big terms about what this can do for you short-term, long-term and what grounding is. But now let's get down to the nitty gritty because people are listening and they're going, well, how do I, what do I do? You know what I do? Um, so how do we ground? How often, how do we do it? What, how does it work? You know, what should I be doing to, for yeah. optimal health? Right. So I've done a lot of research myself. And of course I would urge your listeners and followers to read the earth prescription because it's a whole book dedicated to what do I do when I walk out the door, especially if my goal is to sleep better, which, what should I do? Or if my goal is to, you know, and sleep is a huge problem. Yeah. I mean, sleep alone is just such yeah. a huge global problem for humans and affects so many aspects of our health that I think if they, if this did nothing but improve sleep, we'd yeah. be doing because a huge even improved sleep helps people lose weight. It, uh, decreases dementia. I mean, you know, just even improved sleep is, yeah, would be a fantastic yeah. goal. So anyway, in, in that book, I talk about all seasons, all weather, you know, maybe you don't have a yard troubleshooting, but just a quick snippet is there are so many conductive surfaces outside that'll instantly ground you. It's really easy. So if you can just find a leaf on a tree and touch that you're grounded. Sidewalk is grounded. So if you sit. Okay. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. If I'm wearing shoes. Yes. And I touch the leaf on the tree. Am I still grounded? A hundred percent head to toe. Every oh, okay. It doesn't have to be with your feet. That's such a, I, ah, this is what I'm thinking. Okay. Yes, all right. Because you know, it's really almost inconsiderate to say, I just go be barefoot. Cause first of all, a lot of people don't have a yard. They live. Right. I mean, not everybody's wealthy and has a little patch of grass. And on top of it, um, not only that, but there's a lot of patients with mobility issues or, you know, maybe dementia and they don't know, you know, and you can't just walk out the door. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people in rehab, you're recovering from something serious and it's not as easy to just take off your shoes and walk outside. So you have to have safe, easy alternatives. And some alternatives are to your, there's nothing special that you have to ground through your feet. Your fingertip can ground you. If you hug a tree, literally your face against it can ground you from head to toe. If you're laying on a picnic blanket, you don't want to touch the actual earth and you just put one pinky finger over the edge or you're in a boat up off, you know, ungrounded in a boat, but you put one pinky over the edge of the canoe or whatever in the water, your whole body's grounded from head to toe. It does not have to be barefoot. Oh, wow. Okay. So water grounds you water, water. natural water. Yeah. All bodies yeah. of water, anything on the earth. So if you think of anything on the earth, so sidewalk that is poured on the earth is grounded. So you don't even have to get dirty, just a foot on the sidewalk or sitting on a set steps and your hand on the sidewalk. So if that's the easiest. You know, okay. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. The, the concrete does yeah. not separate you no. from this energy. No, really? It it right through. Yep. So brick does, pavers do, rock does, cement, sidewalks. I know I ground a lot of times in the winter when it gets colder, because I hate cold in my garage, because it's a slab on the earth, you know? So garages and basements are generally. Water does so much so that not only just natural bodies of water outside, but I've tested with my ground test meter and indoors when you're washing the dishes, the water stream is usually grounded because your plumbing has to be grounded by code. So usually you're grounded in the bathtub. If you ever notice you feel better after a bath. Oh yeah. You're grounding the whole time. Even when you're washing dishes or washing your hands, it's little quick snippets of being grounded usually. So there's a lot of different ways to just ground. And, and all in the end, all of those different ways, I would say shoot for 15 minutes at least a day. Um, I've seen benefit, clinical benefit after just 15 minutes a day. So it doesn't have to be a whole hour. It could be, but, it, but if you have 15 minutes, it's worth it. It does make a difference in your health because I so have- that's I'm sorry, go, go ahead. 
Well, I, I ran a study on weight loss because I know how important it is to our metabolism and our heart function and our lungs and our thyroid. So I thought, well, with no change to diet and exercise, it should do something then probably if you need to lose weight, if you're overweight and your intention is to lose weight, if you would ground. And the threshold was anyone who was grounding for 15 minutes or longer started losing weight about a pound a week naturally with no other changes. So it just that that's how much it supports and optimizes your just your basic health on, on a bottom line, just your just your metabolic rate. So people were so that anyway, so my whole point is it was just 15 minutes a day. That is crazy. That is crazy. And I think a lot of people, as soon as you start saying weight loss, I know for me, I you have know, kind of in, in the early kind of time of life we call menopause. And um <laughs> I'm, I'm always listening for my, my weight has changed from what it used to be. And so I'm listening for anything that says weight loss. It's like, wait, what weight because loss? It's not Natural even, weight loss? It's, yeah. It's not even that your weight has probably changed that much. It's that your metabolism has changed. So if you just boost your metabolism in a healthy way, you don't have to really do anything different, but your body just needs more support. Wow. It's going to digest the food you do eat better because it boosts your digestion. Um, it's going to help make your sleep deeper and deeper sleep helps people lose weight. It, lowers your blood pressure. It helps boost your heart rate and your respiratory rate. I mean, just at baseline, you're burning more calories because of the metabolic boost that it gives you of your basal metabolic function, like all of your brainstem functions that you don't have to think about all of them optimize. Wow. Wow. So even at rest, if you're adding grounding in, you should notice a difference. So, um, so just to be clear, so people are understanding, and again, everybody's going to go and get that book and read about it. So they'll understand, but when we, uh, when we want to ground, say we want to spend, we're going to start working 15 minutes of grounding into our life yes. that can look like taking off your shoes and walking outside if you choose to do that. Right. Yep. But it can also look like touching the earth or a tree mm -hmm. or a plant that is in the earth, yep. right? Not a potted plant, right? Right. right. Okay. Rooted so in the earth. Touching a plant that is rooted in the earth with your hand or any other part of you. Yes. Um, and you want to do that continuously for 15 minutes? Yes. Uh -huh. um, there, there hasn't been enough sophisticated studies to show if like you did two minutes here, five minutes there. Like, I don't know. Okay. It, it just hasn't been contrasted. I still think, okay, let me tell you this. The health benefits can become, they're, they're, some of them are instantaneous. Some of them accrue over time because it's really healing to be grounded. But your muscle tension shifts in less than a second, decreases. So if you're getting a tension headache and you just only have two minutes, I would still do it because you will feel your muscle tension decrease and your brain shifts out of stressed out fight and flight to alpha brainwave healing patterns within a second. I mean, we've seen this on an EEG. It's, it's in sec, it's almost instantaneous because it's so electrical. So the two things that are super electrical, your brain and your muscles and, and your heart rate variability, all three of those actually, there's effects that are within a second or two. So I wouldn't say even a minute is too short. If there's a reason you have fibromyalgia or you just, um, you know, whatever your muscles are, yeah. Tense yeah. or you're in a really a, a panic, um, you know, your brain is not calming down. You know, I would go touch it even if it was for a minute, but I would say for benefits to accrue, because obviously then we become instantly ungrounded when we go back inside or put shoes on or stop touching the tree or stop gardening or whatever we're doing. So um, in order for them to be enough that there's, I think change over time that you actually see because we're still ungrounded most of the time, I would say at least 15 minutes a day. But I've uh -huh. been to the point where like, you know, if I'm nauseous and I feel like throwing up, like go outside and touch the earth and that sh you should feel it going down in the minute you touch it because it, it's instantly boosting your digestion and calming your stomach. If you have heartburn, go out and try it. You might feel a difference within 30 seconds and it's not in your head. It's that we become grounded like that, like flipping on a light switch. It's real. And it's not just it's not just the fresh air. It's not just the, the sunshine or the no. blue sky or whatever. Yeah. Those things all contribute though. I mean, that's For all sure. nice. Oh, a thousand percent. Uh-huh. A thousand percent. Like even like you said, looking at a house plant, that's not grounded, but it a hundred percent. There's medical studies that show that that does something to your focus and stuff like that. But this grounding is independent of those things because most of the grounding medical literature. So we did like the bunkers and stuff in the seventies were directed yeah. at the earth. But after that people invented grounding tools. And so these medical studies are double blinded because there's a ground cord and people are grounding on a mat or with a grounding patch. And then some people don't know they're sham grounded and it's not actually a grounding cord, but they think they are. And that's when we're measuring heart rate variability. And that's when we're measuring blood pressure. And that's when we're measuring blood markers of inflammation or 
their brain oh. or so it's definitely just the grounding because they're both in the same you know sit, you know living situation or laboratory or test center and they don't know if they're grounded or not oh my gosh and there have been studies like that that show the difference yeah so i would say there's medical studies showing grounding for about 50 years and i would say grounding tools have been used for the past 20 or so years of medical literature and they're all listed on my website. I have a medical studies page and all of these studies are there and anyone can read them. And they are using double blinded actual, you know, placebo based medical studies. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's again, it's not just like, I think I feel better. I think my, mm -hmm. my headache's going away. It's, it's literally is. Wow. That that's amazing. That's amazing. And the, and the, the fact that not, not everybody knows about this and not everybody is using this. It yes. just blows my mind. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And, all of the things, so many of the things that we talk about, I'm just thinking here in the symposium, all, so many people who've talked about, talked about, you know, being in the forest or meditating on the sitting, uh, being outside to meditate or, you know, walking outside. I'm the mindful walker. You know, I talk about mindful walking outside, but my gosh, if you could just add this in. <laughs> yeah, I would say that. To whatever yeah. outdoor thing you do, yes, you know, it it's would just compound. Yeah. And, and, and even indoor things you do, if you can take them outside. So if you know your physical therapist gave you like three stretches to do for your back, could you go outside and do it grounded because your muscles will relax and you'll get into the stretch deeper and you'll be able to hold it longer or your brain. Like if you're trying to meditate and you do it grounded meditation ultimately does put your brain into those healing alpha brain waves, which is why there's lots of medical literature to show that prolonged meditation really does help. Yeah. But your brain instantly goes into the alpha brain waves when you're grounded. So if you can meditate grounded, you're, you know, you're just doing exponential work in quicker time. Um, so here's a question. If, if I want to go out and I have a chair, say in a sit spot, cause I like to go out and sit in nature and, and we have had speakers who talk about having a special sit spot that yeah. you go and you sit in and observe the world. But if I'm sitting in the chair mm -hmm. and I have my shoes on, mm -hmm. I'm not grounded. Right. You pro you're not, but you can probably think of ways to be, but also, um, if you're sitting in a chair and this is what I do, I take my morning coffee out and I sit in, it's a, unfortunately a plastic chair, but I have, um, slate, like a little patio that's slate. So I just yeah. have one foot on that and then I'm grounded from head to toe. So you can be, and the other thing you can do is, um, you can get a grounding stake um, and push it into the earth next to your chair. And that way, every time you're in your chair, you can just pick it up and just hold the end of the ground cord from the ground stake. And then you're grounded. Like you can just clip it. So I ha carry ground stakes and you can literally just clip it like to your bra strap so that the clip is touching your skin. And then you do whatever you want, bring your laptop out, read a book, have your shoes on. And then you're grounded through the little ground cord. Um, there's lots of different ways. Some people can you know, reach above their head. Like I have people who live on a balcony but they have a tree branch that goes and it's a rooted tree in the ground. Okay. So they go on their balcony. They're not even on the earth and they touch the branch that's coming over and they're grounded from head to toe for as long as they're holding onto the branch. So there's lots of ways. I even have a grounding cane that's made out of stainless steel. So you could sit there and put your hand, you could, if you had mobility issues, you could be sitting down or in a wheelchair and hold onto the cane, which is touching the earth and you're grounded too. So there's a lot of ways you could be grounded that way. Okay. So you're grounded if it's metal. So just yeah. like we're thinking about electricity. Yeah. So if you're, if you've got something metal and the metal thing is touching the ground and you're yeah. touching the metal thing you're yeah does it have to be stuck down into the ground uh, no. i mean you that way you know for sure you right know, right sure, sure. no it doesn't it's just anything okay so i've done lots of tests with my ground test meter and i tested yeah. even crossing the road you know how you have to push a little metal button on a metal pole for a crosswalk yeah yeah okay so push the button and then put your hand on the metal pole and you're grounded while you're just waiting for five minutes before oh, it turns white. yeah like you're literally grounded because it's bolted into the sidewalk that is then grounded on the earth. So, right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I think I just have been thinking in terms of just walking barefoot. Right. And I know not everybody, like you said, if not everybody can do that, and not also, everybody. If I only have 15 minutes and it's my lunch break, I don't even want to get my feet dirty. So, right. I'm sorry because I have a busy day and I can't sit there <laughs> right. washing my feet in the sink. So, yeah, I always think, I personally always think hands. You can wash those real quick. And also if it's cold, you can be bundled up from head to toe and have your boots on and stuff. And a lot easier to switch hands and put, keep them warm in your pocket, you know, than it is to go barefoot in the cold. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about the different weather and stuff, because right now here in North Carolina, where we both live, it's lovely to be outside and comfortable and mild and pretty. And you, you know, can, you can imagine be outside, but um, January, maybe not so much. So are there some options for, or when it's, you know, 
we had a hurricane here a couple of weeks ago. Um, if the weather is inclement or it's seasonally just not a great time, what do you what do you recommend? Well, there's a lot of different layers. So I do like naturally grounding, not using a grounding tool if at all possible. So going outside or finding an indoor space. So like I told you in my garage, I'll ground. I have a little chair and even a space heater. And I know that the cement slab that the, gr that the garage is is grounded. So I'll go out there and I'm protected from the elements and I'm reading or I'm returning emails and getting work done and I'm grounded in comfort. You can do that if you have a basement. Um, but like I said, also in the wa water. So if you go take a bath every night for 15 minutes, you're probably grounded for 15 minutes every single night before bed, which is fantastic. And then, like I mentioned with the medical studies, there are indoor grounding tools. I have those on my website because I make, I have them made out of organic materials. So they're really healthy and they biodegrade and they're eco ethically produced and that kind of thing. And you can get grounded even indoors because here's the crazy thing. There are codes that say we have to ground our major appliances in our home. Like our, your fridge has to be grounded. So it doesn't like, you know, because closed systems, they don't work over time. They short circuit. So everything has to be grounded, but our body is a closed system. And that's why over time it deteriorates. We need to be grounded. We need to plug into this global electrical grid. So it's crazy to me that we have codes that we have to meet for our building, but not for our human bodies. But we can utilize the fact that every home is grounded. Can, can I go and hug my fridge? Can I go and put my yes. stuff my refrigerator? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't recommend touching the, the electrical wiring of a fridge, but it's grounded. So is your dryer. They have to be grounded. So is your hot water heater. It has to be grounded to protect the life of that appliance and to right. so that it doesn't like create an electrical issue, like a hazard. It has to be grounded because it's healthy to be grounded. So you have something to discharge the extra. Right, right. right. Oh so my same gosh. with our bodies. Same mm -hmm. with our bodies. So there's a lot of indoor ways. So anyway, the fact that our homes, most homes are grounded unless they're very, very old. And then you can test to double check. But even if they're old, you can run a ground stake outside and then a cord in through the window. But there are tons of grounding tools you can use inside. So my favorite in the winter is I have a grounded hot water bottle. I fill it up with hot water and I, you know, sleep with that at night. So that's my winter go-to, that and my garage. So there are links on your site to tools that a person can use when you are inside. Yes. To, uh -huh. And so what about you personally? Do you use the, do you keep yourself grounded all day or do you try to just work in 15 minutes here yeah. and there or do you have things that are grounding you everywhere you go yeah. so you just live your life grounded what do you what do you what do you do yes to all the above so <laughs> I, <laughs> I try and go outside and I do know in my mind it's at least 15 minutes so if I know I haven't grounded even if it's on the way up to bed I'll go outside look at the moon ground for 15 minutes so mm -hmm. 15 minutes of actual outdoor grounding if at all possible and then sometimes I'm grounded for hours and hours and hours because I am outside specifically and purposefully doing that. Um, sometimes the weather's bad or, and I just, or I'm busy or I'm traveling. And so I do rely on indoor grounding tools during those times. So it just depends. I would say generally I'm grounded for, I'd say an hour or two a day and I don't need to use an indoor grounding tool, I feel. But if you can't get, or if you have a, long, if you have a healing goal where you do wanna be grounded for longer periods of time, like you're healing your sleep and you wanna sleep grounded, obviously. Um, you might want to consider an indoor grounding tool. But for me, I, tr I use indoor grounding tools. So for wellness, I think 15 minutes or more a day is great. If I'm trying to heal something, so I have a cold, then I might pull up my grounding blanket and have it on the uh -huh. sofa. So if I'm watching a movie, I'm grounded the whole time. You know what I mean? So I use uh -huh. grounding for healing to expedite healing. But if I'm healthy and I'm not trying to treat something, then I do the natural 15 minutes a day or more. Okay. And so, but the, these tools that are out there, they're legit. It's not yeah. just a, it's not a, they look no, a little funny, some of they them. They do. And so it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine because, it, you know, you can get really junky, super cheap, you know, off Amazon grounding, plastic mats, leatherette, vinyl. But to me, that's just so hypocritical because if I'm saying the only reason my earth suit is healthy right now is because I breathe, I drink, and I eat off the earth, and I live on the earth, and I touch the earth, and it's keeping me alive, like why am I going to put a plastic vinyl leatherette sleeping pad in a landfill for 500 years? Like that's rude. It's like, I don't care about my kids or my grandkids also having a healthy earth. So I was very frustrated. Everything is generally bulk produced overseas in just plastic based. I see. So that's why I have a seamstress who lives right near me and we ha handcraft these organic, all natural biodegradable, um, you know, cotton and steel based sleeping pads and stuff like that. Oh, that's beautiful. How, how lovely. I'm definitely going to check that out. And then what about, um, well, we talked about some of the things that happen instantly when you, when you touch the earth, but what about long-term effects uh, over time? Yeah. Yeah. 
that's awesome because I do like to think of instant to treat like I'm nauseous right now or I have a headache right now or I'm getting a little anxious I feel my heart rate going up so I'm in it instantly but you're right over time if you can do it for hours and hours and hours or just consistently for 15 30 minutes a day but for months and years Mm -hmm. well now you've got that metabolic boost so you're probably losing weight or even gaining I've had underweight patients who are able to then gain weight and it, it, it optimizes your body so now you're talking about thyroid levels being um, boosted if it's necessary, but it won't artificially boost them. It brings your body back to optimal health. So now you're talking about inflammation. If we test blood markers in your blood, over time, we're seeing that inflammation throughout your entire body is going down. So often pain is re- reduced. When you're getting in this healing and it's for a long period of time, now your circadian rhythm is better. So during the day, you have more energy and at night, you're sleeping more deeply. So there's a lot of, and unfor- and I think we need even longer term medical studies now. We've got the quicker ones that show minutes, seconds, hours, days, but we don't mm-hmm. have now years. But if you can imagine that you're making your body have less inflammation, sleeping better and has more energy and your metabolism is optimized, I don't think it's a stretch to say that it would have an impact on dementia or an impact on chronic obesity or diabetes prevention, because we know it stabilizes blood sugar. We know it lowers your blood pressure. What we don't know is 10 years later, does that prevent a heart attack. You know, I don't, that we don't have those long-term studies yet. Right. Right. And are, are those being studied? Do you know, is that something that is, it works? I don't know. I'm sure that there are studies, um, but I, you know, they're not funded by a yeah. that wants you on that thyroid medication. So I think that they have to be kind of a rogue, smaller studies at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. All right. Well, let's see. Is there anything I, I w- this is the point at which I wish I had the, the whole audience was in here so they could, you know, <laughs> so people could raise their hands yeah. and ask questions. I'm trying to think of anything that I would want to know. So um, essentially there's no downside. Go outside and touch something that is in the earth with any part of your body for any length of time, as often as you can and you will see health benefits yes, and there's you nailed good it. evidence. You just yeah. summarize everything I wanted to say in one minute. <laughs> well, let's, let's wrap things up here with a, with a, a grounding meditation. Okay. Let's, uh, you, well, this you is, so the intention of this is to be outside on the earth. So as a physician, my whole goal is to make people's health optimized, right? So if you can do this grounded and you have other meditations, so I feel like this might be repeat, but hopefully not. Here's what I recommend to people when they don't have time to go outside and ground for long, for long. Can you Mm -hmm. take three deep breaths outside grounded? So can you touch that tree? Can you just sit on the sidewalk, find a place where you're grounded? We, We just want time for three deep breaths and that will give you enough time for your entire body to be grounded and feel a slight change with your brain activity and your muscle tension. Everything should be feeling a little bit better. So here's what I tell them to do. Go outside and get grounded, put a hand on your chest and a hand on your abdomen. That's where I feel anxiety is always like, in my solar plexus there. So yeah. I hands here yeah. and close my eyes so I can drop my awareness into my body. And three deep breaths, we're going to repeat, I am at home in my body. Because the whole point is your body is really the only safe space you have from birth to death. You don't, everything else changes where you live, your relationships, your own body itself is aging. And as health issues arrive, rise, the problem is you start getting scared to even be in your own body. You start holding your breath. You stop you know, you just get like, you almost feel like it's going to trick you. Or it's going to get sick. Yeah. Gonna, you know what I mean? It's like this totally you know, body. So if you don't trust your body and then you're never grounding it to support, like it's win-win. If you can go ground your body, your body starts optimizing. And then mentally you have to say it's safe to be here. Mm. So you drop your awareness down into your, into your chest and your stomach and you take three deep breaths and I'll just repeat it. So let's take one deep breath together. I am at home in my body. And do it again. I am at home in my body. And do it one more time. I am home in my body. And I just go out and I just, that's it. If you took three breaths grounded and open your eyes and told yourself that you are home here and you're safe in your body, you could switch it to, I feel safe in my body if that works better mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. EEG would show me that your brain is doing in a healthier brainwave pattern. An EMG would tell me that your muscles have relaxed. And an EKG would tell me that your heart function has been boosted just from those three breaths grounded. Wow. Wow. I cannot wait to go and do that right now. If you were not able to do it with us, those of you watching, go and do it after we're done here. And 
and let us know how it goes. You've got my email address. I'm emailing you every day. So <laughs> go and tell me um, how, how that works for you. And I'll, I'll, and, and tell Dr. Conover too. I'm sure she's happy yeah. to, to hear. Um, and everybody's going to rush out and get on your list as well. I'm sure. So they can follow, follow you tell, uh, and along those lines, tell me just a little bit about what uh, this, you've got a free gift for people who've registered for the symposium. So tell us a little bit about what that is and just take a minute to tell us about what you do okay. uh, as well. So the free gift is I have a, a, just an instantly downloadable book that'll guide you through the next 10 days, taking 10 minutes. And it doesn't even have to be 10 minutes. It could be those three deep breaths we talked about, but so it's just say taking a minute a day for the next 10 days to ground intentionally and notice your health at the beginning and the end of that. So it's just a little 10 day program. It's just really quick and easy. Um, and then I have a newsletter that I hope people sign up for because as the medical literature releases on grounding and other holistic healing modalities, not just grounding, I do a weekly blog post where I usually pick some interesting medical study and review it and give just a simple suggestion. Um, and then I do, you know, public speaking and writing and I have a couple online health classes I enjoy running too. The next one coming up is the Earth Connect class. And I also have an electro hypersensitivity class coming up because we're so electrically based, we're also then very affected by man-made EMFs. And so it kind of goes hand in hand, which is why the whole second part of my website, intuition-physician.com deals with electrosensitivity as well. And shielding. Ah, wow. Well, that's a whole nother topic. Yeah, it's a whole nother one. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for, um, for, and wait, did you mention this? No, 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 you didn't tell me about this, uh, this free gift here. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Do you know, do you remember what it is? Do you remember? Yeah, what it's just the okay, okay. All right. I was going to say, I can read it. If you need me to. I didn't know if you remembered what it was, yeah. but definitely tell people what they're going to get. Cause it's a, Oh, it's a grounding. It's a book. Cool. Tell us. Yeah. Well, I did. It's just that ebook that gives you 10 days. Oh, I'm grounding. sorry. Okay. No, All good. right. I missed that. Sorry. <laughs> yes. I thought that was something separate on your site. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You get that 10 days <laughs> of grounding um, book. So definitely the, um, the link is on this page. So be sure to sign up for that and that'll get you connected with Laura as well. Laura, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your wisdom with us. This is absolutely fascinating. It's so great to have you back here. Any final thoughts for us? No, I just love it. I loved it last time. I loved it this time. And thank you for letting me be a part of it. Awesome. You bet. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your year. Bye.